Hello everyone and welcome back to Maytech. Today we have the Xtool S1 here and we're going to use it to show you how to make some laser cut knife handles just like this one right here. So um, let's just jump right into this video. The first and most obvious thing you'll need for this project is a laser cutter. Diode lasers like the 20 watt Xtool S1 are a great choice for a project like this because of the dark engravings they can give you. If you're interested in finding out more about the S1, make sure to check out the link in the description below. The next thing you'll need is some knife blade blanks, preferably a blank that already comes with the screws. Many knife blanks don't actually come with screws, so if the one you're selecting doesn't, please make sure to grab them separately. Of course, if you're a bladesmith, you can use whatever blade you've made. You'll also need some hardwood thins. The ones I'm using are 1 8 of an inch thick, but you can use quarter inch thins if you want a thicker handle. For this project, I'll be using walnut, maple, and paduke woods. Most hardwoods will work for this project, so feel free to experiment. And as always, I'll have links to all the material used in this project in my blog post, which will be linked in the description below. The first step in this project is to acquire an accurate two-scale image of your knife blank. This will allow you to digitally trace the handle so you can get an accurate laser cutting. There are two ways to accomplish this. I prefer to use the flatbed scanner on top of my printer and I simply just take a scan of the knife blank. If you don't have a scanner, you can also take a top-down picture of the knife blank making sure to include a ruler in the picture so you can scale the picture up to the correct size in the software. So as you can see here, I'm just using the scanner on top of a brother brand printer to acquire my image. As you can see, I've went ahead and imported the scanned image of the knife blank into Lightburn. If you don't have Lightburn, you can also use a free program like Inkscape to do something very similar. I'm now going to go and zoom into the handle. Once I got it placed where I want it, I'm going to go and select the pen tool. Using this pen tool, I'm very slowly going to trace the outline of the knife handle. Your trace does not need to be perfect, as you can go in and edit individual nodes after you're done tracing. Now I'm not going to drag you through the whole process of tracing this handle. So what I did was I already went ahead and pre-traced the handle on another layer and completed it looks something like this. I also went ahead and using the circle tool added a circle for every screw hole. I then measured the head of the screw and I added a circle around every screw hole the same diameter of the screw head. This circle will be used to countersink your screw head into the handles which I'll show you later. I am now going to go ahead and do a test cut of this to see how well it fits onto the handle. For my settings, I'll be engraving this blue ring around my screw holes at a speed of 20 and a power of 25. Everything else I will be cutting out at a speed of 7 and a power of 100. For the test cut of this handle, I'll be using a scrap piece of 1 8 Baltic birch plywood. The reason I'm using this plywood right now is because it's a lot more affordable to use for prototyping than hardwood boards. I've attached the plywood to the honeycomb bed of the X-Tool using some bar magnets. I'm now going to go ahead and do a frame trace just to make sure my cut fits within the work material. That looks good, so let's go ahead and cut this. So this is what the plywood prototype looks like. After my first cut of this prototype, I actually went back into Lightburn and made small changes to the handle using the node tool. This version you're seeing right now is about my fourth try. So let's line it up into the handle 
using the screws to center it properly. This version of the handle fits just the way I want it to, so we can now move on. So now that we have the handle fit in the way we want, the next step is to take those outer circles that we created and to make a copy of them. Taking that copy I just made, I'm going to add a fill engrave to it. I am now going to go ahead and add a pattern to engrave onto my knife scales. This of course is optional. If you just want to go with a natural wood look onto your scales, you can just skip this step. Once you have your pattern sitting the way you like on the knife scale, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and make a copy of the outline of the scale. Now making sure to now select both the outline you just made and the pattern, go and click on the Boolean subtract option in the menu and you will now get a perfect crop of the pattern inside your knife scale. I'm now going to go ahead and hide both the pattern and the fill for the screw head so we could see the original circles for the screw head. I'm going to go ahead and select these original circles and then I'm going to go and select the offset tool and I'm going to add an offset circle of half a millimeter around each one of these original circles. I'm now going to go ahead and select each one of these new offsets and I'm also going to select the pattern that fills the scale. Using the boolean subtract tool again, I'm going to go ahead and cut out circles in the pattern for each one of the screw heads. Doing this will create a nice border around each one of the screw heads, adding to your design. So the next thing I'm going to do is select all the objects in this knife scale and group them together. Once they've been grouped, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of the scale. I'm going to select that copy I just made and using the mirror tool, I'm going to flip it, creating a mirrored copy for the other side of the knife. Now that I have the scales for both sides of the knife designed, I'm going to go and cut these both out on plywood and do a test fit onto the knife to see how they fit. For the settings, I'll be engraving the pattern at a speed of 150 and a power of 100. I will also be engraving it at 300 lines per inch. For the countersinks for the screws, I'll be engraving them at a speed of 150 and a power of 50. I will also be engraving these at 300 lines per inch and I will be using the bi-directional option. I will be cutting out these scales at a speed of 7 and a power of 100. Here are the plywood prototypes of the scale, and they turned out just the way I wanted them to. You can now see how the engraved area for the screw head lets you countersink the screw head just like so. You can of course engrave them deeper if you would like more of a countersink. Let's go ahead and install these scales onto the knife blank and see how they fit. The fit here for both sides looks good to me, so let's move on to the next stage. So what I've done here was I've went and made copies of the scales with different patterns and designs. This way I can test out the handle with different looks. I am now going to go ahead and cut these out on the hardwood thins using the same settings I used previously for the plywood. I will be starting off here with a piece of walnut, and then I'll be moving on to my other hardwoods. I have the walnut locked in place using these bar magnets on each corner, and I will once again be doing a frame trace to make sure my cuts fit within the material.
Since that frame trace looks good, let's go ahead and cut these out. Now I've mounted some of the walnut ones to the knife just to see how they look and I'm really liking the fit and the design. So the next thing we want to do is to finish these. The first thing we need to do in the finishing process is to remove any of the resin that has collected on top of the scales from the engraving process. To do this, I simply use some rubbing alcohol and a cloth to wipe off the resin. Now that the scales are all cleaned, I'm going to go and use my router table to round over the edges of the scale. This part is optional, but it does give the handle a more comfortable fit in your hand. For the router bit, I'll be using a 1 16th radius round over bit. Let's now give these scales a quick sanding. For this, I'll be using 240 grain sandpaper. Once the scales have been sanded, the final step is to give them some sort of protective clear coat. For this, I'll be using Painter's Touch Clear Satin. I chose a spray for these scales simply for the ease of application. So here we have the finished scales after the finish has dried. And I'm really liking the looks of some of these, particularly the Paduke and the Walnut scales. For me, these floral leaf designs are the ones that I like best. And routing over these edges actually gave it a cool look like there's a natural scale liner added to the knife. So this is a technique that I will definitely be testing out for some of the scales I do for locking blade designs. Now you'll want to make sure you subscribe to the channel because in a future video we'll be showing you how to use the infrared module for the X tool to engrave the blades of your knives. So that's it for this video folks. If you have any questions about the X tool or about the process for making these scales at all, please make sure to leave them in the comments section. If you've liked this video, Please make sure to give it a thumbs up, remember to hit that notification bell, and we'll see you all again next time.